If you're looking for the easiest one bar heavy attack build right now in ESO, you're watching the right video. Hey everybody, this is my easy Heavy Attack Magicka Templar build update for ESO. With tons of self-healing and synergies built right in, the Templar is going to be fantastic for both groups and solo play, and with this one bar Heavy Attack build, literally anyone can do massive damage with a super easy rotation and no Trials gear necessary. So if you're ready to take your Templar to the next level, then let's get started. All right, everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Templar with an updated solo and group one bar build. This is going to be our heavy attack focused Magicka Templar. So much potential on this build. Great for all types of content. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into the buff stats on setup here. Check out the character sheet and we're looking at 31,000 max Magicka, about 25,000 max health, 17k max stamina. Recoveries are decent overall, but we really don't need any recovery on this build at all. That, of course, is because it's a heavy attack build. 5,000 spell damage, 50% crit chance, and really good resistances. I'm trying a, a few new things here to buff the resistances on the build. I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, but that's going to be great for solo content especially. Now, of course, you will want all of your points here put into Magicka. This is 64 points into your max Magicka stat being a magicka focused templar as far as the mundus stone we are running the thief mundus for the extra critical chance very important on this build but we do have tons of other buffs on this particular setup the most important of those is going to be the empower buff uh, this of course comes from our mythic item which we'll talk about in a minute but all of these are very important for a solo especially for a one bar build the best food option here on this build is going to be bewitched sugar skulls for all of your max stats that's health Magicka, Stamina, and Health Recovery. Uh, like I said, we don't really need any of the other recoveries, so just go all in to your max stats. And in terms of the potion, something new I'm trying out here, Potion of Resistances. This is going to give us that extra uh, about 4k physical and spell resistance, putting us almost in like a tank setup here as far as the resistances. I find this is pretty good for solo builds. Like I said, we don't need the extra recovery for like Magicka or even Stamina or Health Recovery. So why not throw in a bit of extra resistances? Uh, this, by the way, stacks with Major Resolve, which is the armor buff that you get either from your Templar class skills or from the Oaken Soul Ring. So this is something you might want to experiment with. There are different versions of this potion, uh, but a basic version you can try is going to be the Bug Loss, Imp Stool, and then the Mud Crab Chitin. Finally, for the race here, I went with High Elf. Half is just going to give us a good combination of stats. We've got Max Magicka, a good combination of damage, the weapon and spell damage buff, and a little bit of extra sustain, plus reduce damage while channeling, which is really nice uh, because our main attack, obviously, on a heavy attack build, it's basically a channeled effect, those uh, heavy attack lightning staff attacks. You'll take 5% less damage if you are a High Elf. Okay, that said, let's run over the gear sets here very quickly. This is a similar setup that you've probably seen in the past on my channel as far as heavy attack builds go. The main five piece set is going to be Sergeant's Mail. That is a base game set, comes from Wayrest Sewers, so it's fairly easy to pick up. I definitely recommend you get this uh, if you're at all interested in the heavy attack playstyle. Still currently the best heavy attack set in the game. Four stacks of 645 damage, so in about so that's about 2,500 bonus heavy attack damage that applies to all of the ticks of your lightning staff's uh, damage plus the final tick. So I know it doesn't sound like much on the tooltip, but this ends up being a huge buff. Now this is a heavy armor set, so it's a little bit awkward to run on the Magicka Templar. Best way by far is going to be to do uh, the weapon here. So lightning staff is going to count for two pieces since that is a two-handed weapon. And then you can run just one piece on the body. I prefer the chest uh, because like I said, it is a heavy armor set. So you're going to get the most resistances out of running that piece. And then just two pieces on the jewelry. So the necklace and the ring. Got spell damage enchants there and then bloodthirsty as the trait. Second five piece set, Noble Duelist. 
Uh, this is another terrific heavy attack set. Gives you some good weapon and spell damage bonuses. Extra stamina recovery is not bad on this build because we are using a uh, stamina effect. And then when you deal damage in melee range, over 2,000 bonus heavy attack damage on this set as well. That does last for 15 seconds. So great all around heavy attack set. This is another base game pickup. I believe this is the uh, Crucible dungeon. So it is fairly easy to get this one as well. And it is light armor, so it fits a lot better on the Magicka Templar. You can use this on uh, the body. So five pieces on the body, the feet, the legs, hands, waist, and shoulders. Uh, all divines there at Max Magicka as the enchant. Now, if you are familiar with this set, the one limitation is you do need to be in melee range. Now, I personally don't have any issue with that. Uh, especially if I'm playing this as a solo build, most enemies are going to run up to me in, in melee range anyways, uh, but I will have some alternate options in the written guide. If you want to be a purely ranged focus build, link for that will be in the description, so make sure you check that out if you are interested. To wrap things up, we've got the One Piece monster set here. Slimecraw is still sort of ideal for the extra critical chance here. This actually has a, a bit of a bonus critical chance to it. So this is one of the best monster sets you can run if you want to boost that stat. You can run this in light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, whatever you have access to. Uh, Divine is going to be the best trait though with max magic as your enchant. And then finally our mythic ring is going to be Oaken Soul with again spell damage, bloodthirsty as the trait. And this is just your go-to mythic as far as one bar builds in the Elder Scrolls Online. Gives you tons of buffs both major and minor. Most important, like I said, is the Empower buff there at the bottom. That's going to give you 80% bonus heavy attack damage. That's for PvE content. And like I said, gives us all of our major and minor buffs. So it does open up a lot of possibilities. Lets you vastly simplify your build. Lets you run any potion that you want. Uh, so I do recommend you pick it up. Now, I do have a full video guide on this, written guide as well on the channel. I'll have links for those in the description if you need help getting this. So that is the setup. Again, we are running the one bar lightning staff, Sergeant's Mail. Uh, we also have the chest piece of Sergeant's Mail, two pieces of jewelry. Then we're running five pieces Noble Duelist on the body with the Slime Craw monster set, one piece on the helmet. And finally, the Oaken Soul Mythic Ring. Now let's jump into the skills next. And you have a lot of flexibility here on the Templar, which I really like. As I said in the intro, this is going to be great for solo content and also groups. Uh, you can do a lot of things to support a group with this build as well, which is great. Uh, first skill that you'll want to get here is Unstable Wall of Elements. This comes from the Destruction Staff skill line. This is a great AoE damage skill, but even better, it sets enemies off balance. I talked about this in my Magicka Necromancer previously. Off balance is the key to heavy attack builds, you guys. That's because enemies take so much more damage when they are set off balance. You also get bonus Magicka back if you're using a lightning staff, uh, heavy attack at the same time. So really you want something to give off balance, especially if you're a solo build uh, to buff those heavy attacks. So unstable wall of elements from the destruction staff skill line. Great, great skill for that. I'm going to recommend that no matter what type of content you're doing with this build. Next up, blazing spear, another amazing AOE damage skill. This comes from the Templar class skill line. It's going to be from the Adric Spear. That's the second to last ability here. So it's great AOE magic damage, both upfront and damage over time. And group mates can activate a synergy here to restore Magicka or Stamina, whichever is higher. So this is also great for groups. Next up, Razor Caltrops. I'm going to recommend this if you are focused on solo content. This comes from the Assault skill line, by the way. Second to last ability here. And that is because... It applies Major Breach, so that's about a 6k armor debuff on targets in the area for 4 seconds. It only costs a little bit of stamina, so we don't need to run, worry about running out. And this just increases all of our damaging effects. It basically buffs our heavy attacks, buffs our ultimate, our AoE damage. Because when enemies get debuffed, when they have less armor, they're going to take more damage from you. So this is perfect for solo content. Now in groups... A lot of the times tanks or even healers will run a similar skill for that major breach debuff uh, and you won't have to worry about that. In that case, you can run another group support skill in this slot, something like Breath of Life, which is an amazing group heal. 
Great for emergencies, I would recommend that probably for group content. Next up, we have another restoring light skill called Ritual of Retribution. This is the second to last ability here in the skill line. This does very powerful AOE magic damage in a huge range, about 12 meter radius, it's gonna damage everything within that zone. And you have another synergy effect here, the Purify Synergy, which cleanses negative effects and heals your allies. So this is gonna be great for both solo and group content, especially you know for clearing through trash, getting through dungeons quicker. Templar is really just kings of AOE damage uh, with this particular setup, so I do like it. Now, if you are completely solo and facing more difficult content, maybe a world boss, maybe a difficult arena, you can swap this out for something a little bit more defensive. In that case, I usually recommend Adric Spear and the Radiant Ward skill. This is a damage shield skill that gets stronger the more enemies are attacking you. This is basically my secret for soloing world bosses. Uh, soloing dungeons, any any case where I have tons of enemies coming in at me. Radiant Ward is a great option for that, so just keep that in mind. And then finally, Dawn's Wrath ability here. I'm currently using Living Dark. This is going to be great for soloing because anytime you take damage, you get healing back. About 2k heal every half second. So this does heal you up pretty quickly, but you have to be taking damage at the same time. And the great thing about that is for solo content, we can combine that with the shield that I just talked about, Radiant Ward. Radiant Ward is going to protect our health while Living Dark is going to heal us up at the same time. This is a great combination for solo gameplay. Obviously for group content, especially if you're running with a healer or if you even have a healer companion, uh, you can swap in something here for more damage. I really like Vampire's Bane. has a huge duration, over 30 seconds. Does great single target damage over time. And you also get some really good passives uh, from the Dawn's Wrath skill line. Now, finally, for the ultimate on the one bar setup, I do like a few options here. Easy mode is going to be Elemental Rage. That's from the Destruction Staff skill line. This thing does the most damage possible, I think, of the ultimates you have available. The fact that you're using a lightning staff means it's going to last two seconds longer, so even more damage. So this is a great option. I also really like running uh, the Mage's Guild Shooting Star if you have access to this. This is going to be great for the ultimate generation. You can see down here at the bottom, 12 ultimate for each enemy hit by the initial blast. This also does a stun uh, knockdown, which is very good and it still does decent AoE and upfront damage. So those would be my two main choices. Feel free to swap those out based on what you have access to uh, and what's best for the situation. So there you go. That is the one bar setup. And again, I will have all of these skills and the alternate options for solo and group play listed in the written guide. So make sure to check that out if you have any questions. Now let's go over the very simple rotation. You basically, uh, for damage here, you're gonna have five abilities that you just swap in between after every heavy attack. Now, before a fight, I do like to kind of preload all of these because they are damage over time effects. All of these, in fact, are dots. So I'm gonna start with Caltrops and then cast every skill with a light attack just to get them on the ground, including my ultimate if it's ready. And then I'm going to heavy attack in between each skill to maintain them. So here's what that would look like. I'm gonna start with Caltrops. Here's Blazing Spear. Here's our wall, Ritual. Vampire's Bane, drop the ult. Heavy attack now and then recast. So heavy attack Caltrops. Heavy attack Spear. Heavy attack Wall. Heavy attack Ritual. And then restart. Heavy attack into Caltrops. Heavy attack Spear. Heavy attack Wall. And heavy attack Vampire's Bane. That's the basic rotation. And then it just starts over. There's the Caltrops. Spear, Wall, and Ritual. The same thing again, but ending with Vampire's Bane. And you can really just keep the heavy attack down the entire time if you want. If it doesn't bother you, that's the easiest way to do this build. You literally don't even have to, you know, lift your finger off the button if you don't want to. Just go ahead and finish this out. And then go ahead and use your ultimate whenever ready. Okay, as far as champion points go, very simple setup here in the green tree. 
what I recommend is going to be Steed's Blessing, followed by Treasure Hunter, Rationer, and Liquid Efficiency. In the blue tree, our main slotted stars are going to be Binding Aura, Thaumaturge. We've got Weapons Expert, that's for 20% extra heavy attack damage done. And Fighting Finesse for the bonus critical damage and critical healing. Finally, in the red tree, Rejuvenation for the recovery, Fortified for the armor, Boundless Vitality for the extra health, and then Final Star would be up to you. If you are doing a lot of solo content with shields, I do recommend Bastion to buff that Radiant Ward skill. It's going to give you 15% extra damage shields. If not, something like Celerity that's found in the Wind Chaser sub-constellation. This gives you 10% movement speed, which is very nice with the Lightning Staff Heavy Attack since that does slow you down just a little bit. But as usual, I will have all of this laid out in written format with the uh, 300, 600, 900, and 1200 champion point breakdowns. So there's something there for everybody. Go ahead and check out the written guide if you need help there. But finally, if you're curious about the outfit style here, uh, this is all light armor. That's going to be Ifri's Will from the Earthen Root Enclave dungeon. All right, everybody, and with that said, that's going to wrap up this build video for the one bar heavy attack Magicka Templar. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and found it informative. Of course, if you did, do me a favor and crush that like button so that YouTube knows to share this video with others. If you have any questions on the build or you need to look at other options, make sure to check out that written guide down below. Over there, I will have alternate gear set options, all the alternate skills, passives listed, champion point breakdowns for 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP, as well as our guide for how to obtain the Oaken Soul Ring. So no matter where you are in your Templar journey, there's going to be resources there to help. We've got a few more heavy attack builds on the way for ESO, so if that interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And by the way, next week is our preview of the upcoming Necrom chapter and the Arcanist class. Got some exclusive information for you guys right here on the channel, so you'll want to make sure you're subscribed for that as well. Huge shout out as always to our channel members for supporting this channel. Could not do this without you guys, so thanks again. And thanks to all of you for watching this video. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next one.